Welcome back to P4. Today we are looking at using trigonometric identities and this is within our parametric equations. Okay, and it's unit 3.2. Now, to be able to do this, you're going to need to know a few of your identities. So you need to know that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. You also need to know the variations of this. So if I divide through by sine squared, I get 1 plus cot squared x. And then this becomes cosec squared x. Or if I divide it through by cos squared, I'd get tan squared x plus 1 is equivalent to sec squared x. You'll also need to know your double angle formulae. So I won't write them all down, but I'll just put down the sine for an example. If you remember, it's 2 sine theta cos theta. You might need cos 2 theta as well, and you might need tan 2 theta. Let's jump into a couple of examples. Now, if we look at this one, we have our two parametric equations. They are trigonometric equations, and we have to look for ways to link them. So we've got sine and cos. So the most obvious way to link sine and cos is sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. Now, obviously, I've used t instead of x there, as that is what's in my question. Now, with my question, what I need to do is I need to rearrange each of these. So, I've got x minus 2 will be equal to the sine t. And if I add 3, I get y plus 3 is equal to my cos t. I can now substitute these in. So, sine squared will be x minus 2 squared and cos squared will be y plus 3 squared and that then will be equal to 1 and this is my Cartesian equation. Part B for me to sketch the curve I need to understand what this Cartesian equation means and this one is the equation of a circle so we want a circle and its center will be 2, negative 3. And that comes from here and here. And radius will be 1. And what you need to remember, if you don't, the equation of the circle is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. And it has a center a, b and the radius is r. So that's what you need to remember to be able to sketch this. And then for my sketch, I just need a set of axes, x and y. Circle, put my coordinates in, two across, minus three down, and mark on that my radius is one. And I'm done. Okay, so we've got another set of parametric equations. This one we can see here has a single t and this one has a 3t. So we can't use our sine squared plus cos squared or anything like that to link these together. We need to, as we've got a 3t, we need to be thinking along the roots of a, along the lines of a double angle formally. Now I'm just going to jump onto a clean page just to to just focus on a here we need to show that the cartesian equation can be written in this form so let's start with the sine 3t so sine 3t can be written as 2t plus t and if i expand this i get sine 2t cos t plus cos 2t sine t and now I expand my sine 2t and that is 2 sine t cos t 
and that's still multiplied by cos t. And now when I expand my cos 2t, I just want it in terms of sine. Okay, so that cos 2t I'm going to use 1 minus 2 sine squared t. And the reason I want it in terms of sine is because this x here is only in terms of sine. So I don't want anything in terms of cos. Now it's just a matter of simplifying these. And again, I want to get rid of this cos squared here. And there we have our sine 3t in terms of sine t. Now, if I take my x equals 1 third sine t and multiply by 3, I get 3x equals sine t. This is what I want to substitute into here. So now we've got our y equals 3 lots of 3x minus 4 times 3x cubed. So that gives me 9x minus 108x cubed. And that is my Cartesian equation. Now we also need to put it in this form. So let's take the 9x outside and then that gives us 1 minus 12x squared where we can clearly see that a is 9 and b is 12. Now we want to find the domain and range and we need to use this domain of t which we can see is between 0 and pi by 2. So if I look at my x values when I substitute 0 in it's going to give me 0 and when I substitute pi by 2 in, it's going to give me 1 third of 1, which is going to be a third. So I know that my domain is going to be between 0 and a third. So my domain is between 0 and 1 third. Now my range, again, substituting these in I get 3 lots of 0 so sine of 0 is 0 and then we went sine of 3 lots of pi by 2 and this would mean that it's minus 1 so then my range is going to be greater than or equal to minus 1 but less than or equal to 0 at least that's what I'm tempted to do problem is with this range and this value here. Substituting 0 in is not actually going to give me my smallest value of sine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub that bit out and I'm going to show you what you need to do with it. Now, the minus 1 is fine because I know that in terms of sine, minus 1 and 1, they're the minimum and maximum values. So I know that that will be fine. But that zero, that's the one I'm a bit concerned about. So let's have a think about the graph. So it's normally t is between zero and pi by two. When I'm actually looking at three t, it's the same as looking at between zero and three pi by two. Okay, now if I think of the sine graph, normal sine graph if I'm going up as far as 3 pi by 2 which is obviously here I get that minus 1 but between 0 and this 3 pi by 2 we actually have a large value of 1 happening at pi by 2 and if I think of it in terms of this I would be dividing by 3 so it's actually going to be at pi by 6 so if I substitute pi by 6 into my sine 3t, I'd get a positive 1. 
and that's where the issue lies i need to make sure that i'm looking at where the minimum and maximum potential values are and not looking at just either end of my initial values and seeing what they are so i'd actually have y equals sine of three lots of pi by six because that would give me my pi by two and that gives me a positive one so my range is actually between minus one and plus one and actually looking back in my domain of t these should really be just not have the equals in them